G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. This time, we're going to be looking at thruster damage. There are times when, in your design, you may want to be able to hide your thrusters. Or, you want to check to see whether a bit of your ship will be able to be placed behind a thruster without getting damaged by the ship's own movement. Or, conversely, you want to booby trap your ship and you want the thruster to blow up something. So how do we do that? This brick has no external thrusters, yet it can move, and that's because all the thrusters are hidden internally. They're either hidden in the holes, or if we take a look inside, they are hidden down the end. We've got these for going down, and these for going up. That's possible because I've left enough blocks clear for the ship to be able to safely move. But what is that clearance? What is the minimum you can get away with? Does it change with atmosphere? Does it change with different other situations? The answer is yes, it does change with atmosphere if you're talking about ion thrusters and atmospheric thrusters. But let's take a close look. I've set up a few test suites, one on the planet and one in orbit and we'll have a look at what damage the thrusters do to light armor blocks or heavy armor blocks and does it make any difference. We're now down on the planet. We're at our testing rig. What I've got set up here is a bunch of all the different thruster types with light armor blocks set up directly in front of them. These have been running for a while, so any of the blocks that are there should have already been damaged by the thrusters and if they're not, then we're clear at that range. If we place even one more block closer to any of these thrusters, they do get damaged. So this will give us an idea of what happens at sea level with each of these thrusters and how much damage they can do to armor. So if you have a look at our small ion thruster, we've got a two block gap. We can confirm that this block is fully intact because it's at 100%. If I place another one in front of this, and same with the large ion thruster, we'll see that these gradually get damaged, down to 96% already. So we know that that's not safe. But at sea level, two blocks will be safe. It's the same for the large ion thruster. This is getting damaged just a bit quicker. If we clear those out, we can see that neither of these blocks has been damaged at all. The atmospheric thruster, the small one, has the same clearance as the two ion thrusters. We have a look here, still at 100%, we add another one, and it'll slowly get damaged. It's very slow, but it is there. If we wait, if we wait, it'll drop to 98%, come on, there we go. That will happen whether it's light armor or heavy armor. If we pull out heavy armor, which is often what people recommend for your landing pad so it doesn't get damaged, you can see that it is getting damaged. It just takes a lot longer. And that's some unusual behavior from space engineers. Hmm, that's, there we go. That was odd. Now, our large ship, large atmospheric thruster needs a bit more clearance than these other three. It's currently set up with one, two, three, four, five blocks of clearance. And we can, we can see that it's done no damage to this block. 100%. If we put another one down, it'll get damaged. So confirmation, five blocks for your large ship, large atmospheric thruster. And at sea level, or effectively where we are, this is going to be the maximum range you're going to need for an atmospheric thruster. If you're landing on top of a mountain, because these things will put out less thrust, you won't need the same clearance. But if you've got five, you will almost certainly be safe in all conditions that the atmospheric thruster actually works. The hydrogen thrusters, they seem to be the ones that do the most damage, which, let's be honest, it's probably fair. They're also the ones that output the most thrust. So the small hydrogen thruster, even it needs three blocks clearance. 
If we have a look, this fourth block, fully intact. And these have been running the whole time I've been talking. If we add another one, this will get damaged. There we go. Down to 98% already. So we'll get rid of that one. The large hydrogen thruster. This needs seven blocks of clearance. If I even bring it down to six, you can see that this will get damaged. 98%. And it'll probably slowly drop a bit further, if I wait long enough. Hmm. Come on. Come on. There we go. So, the damage will be slow, but it will be there. So there you have it. Those are the clearances you need for the large ship thrusters at sea level. Ions, two each. Small atmospheric thruster, two blocks. Large atmospheric thruster, five blocks. Small Hydrogen 3, and Large Hydrogen 7. And now it's time for the Small Ship Thrusters. The first question I had when I was looking at this, and what thruster damage will occur with Small Ship Thrusters on Large Ship Blocks, was, does it matter if they're Heavy Armor? Does it matter if they're Light Armor? And we can answer that pretty quickly by sticking this Heavy Armor Block in front of that Atmospheric Thruster, and this one in front of the Hydrogen Thruster and have a look. We can already see that this has taken a small amount of damage. Same with this one in front of the hydrogen thruster. So, heavy armor blocks won't protect you from thruster damage, but they will survive a lot longer before deforming than the light armor blocks, and should take a little bit more of the landing thud type damage than the light armor blocks as well. We can see that with the hydrogen thrusters, or with the small ship thrusters rather, the only thruster that needs more than one large block of clearance is the large hydrogen thruster. The rest of these require less than one large block before they cause any damage at sea level. But what about when you want to put small ship blocks in front of the thrusters? Well, things get a little bit odd if you involve landing gear. And that's what we've got here. We've got landing gear attaching this small ship rig to the large ship underneath. And when we do that, these thrusters, they don't damage the ship that they're attached to at all. And if you block over their thruster, you also don't damage other blocks attached to other grids. You could potentially use this to cheat by placing down a large block, attaching your small ship to it with a landing gear, and then flying off. That might work to prevent damage. Because your landing gear is locked, you may not do any damage to the grids. This may only work though with large grids that are stations. I haven't tested this, whether it works with large ships. We'll come back to this once we're in orbit. For now, let's move on to these thrusters and what damage they can do to a separate grid. Small ion thruster. Seems to me that one and a half blocks might be perfectly safe at sea level. And again, that works with this plume that we see. Visually, that's not really contacting that block. With the large ion thruster though, it is, and as we can see, there's damage. So it's more of about two blocks. How about the small atmospheric thruster? Have we got any damage here? Nope. Same as the small ion thruster. And then the large atmospheric thruster? It seems to take about four blocks. And the small hydrogen, about three blocks. The large hydrogen again, it's the big daddy of the bunch and it's causing the most damage. So it is, oh, this box seems to be intact. So it's a whopping, how many blocks is that? It's about eight blocks away. So it can cause damage from eight blocks away. This is all of the testing at sea level. Things will behave differently in space, 
and the ion thrusters do more damage up in space. So let's jump up to our orbital testing facility, and we'll see what damage they'll do up there. As you can see, the orbital testing facility is the exact same as what was down on the planet's surface. We have our ion thrusters, we have our atmospheric thrusters, and we have our hydrogen thrusters. The ion thrusters up in space do a lot more damage, which makes sense given they put out a lot more thrust when they're in space. The small ion thruster down on the surface needed only two blocks to be perfectly safe for use. It wouldn't do any damage. But up in space, it actually needs four blocks. As you can see, this one that's placed here, it's damaged and it's the fourth block away. If we get rid of it, this one will never get damaged. With the large ion thruster, you actually need five blocks. And we can demonstrate that here, showing this one's damaged and that one's damaged. But if we get rid of both of those, these two, they'll be perfectly safe. So compared to the two blocks, that's double for the small one and two and a half times for the large ion thruster. Atmospherics, they don't work up here at all, so we'll move on. And hydrogen, as you might expect, is exactly the same as it was down on the planet's surface. Three for the small, seven for the large. And now it's time to move on to small ships up in space. We can now demonstrate what I was talking about with no damage while the landing gear are attached and then damage as soon as they're not with these thrusters. So if we hop in this cockpit, and we're going to need to because this thing's going to fly off as soon as we do the thrust override. Let's turn these thrusters on. And now all the thrusters are on. We can hop out of the cockpit because we've still got the landing gear locked and we can see the plume's coming through but there's no damage. No damage. Let's put some in front of these hydrogen thrusters. Cover them up as well. Now... So, what do we think is going to happen as soon as I unlock the landing gear? Well, I'm going to fly backwards for one. That's why I've got this odd contraption on the side here with all these hydrogen thrusters, so that I've got enough thrust to stabilize this ship somewhat. If we unlock this landing gear, all of those blocks I just placed, they're going to get damaged. As we can now see. Hydrogen thrusters have already broken through one bit. The ion thrusters will take a little bit longer but they'll eventually cook through the bits that they're on. And there you go. There you have it. What sort of range do they cause damage? Well, if we turn them off and we hop out, we can start placing down some blocks and test this out. So now that the testing's complete, we can see for the large hydrogen thruster, we need at least a gap of nine blocks for the small hydrogen thruster we need a gap of three blocks for the large ion thruster we need a gap of five blocks and for the small ion thruster a gap of three I'll tabulate all these results and put them in the description just like I did with the thruster power tutorial the large ship rig's been running that whole time, so we'll jump back over there and check on those blocks that were placed near the ion thrusters. And after we've looked at both, looks like both are intact, so we're right. Excellent. I'll list all these results off on the description, just in case you want it for reference in the future. This is all tested in-game, in survival, in the latest version, which is 1.181.5. Hopefully this will be of some use to you if you guys have any designs where you're trying to quietly hide a thruster, or you're wondering why part of your ship's damaged. I hope this has been useful. There's more tutorials to come. If you've got any other thruster related questions, or really any other questions related to Space Engineers, hit me up in the comments. If I can't come up with the answer, I'll see what I can do to figure it out for you, or maybe come up with a video like this one. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this. There's more to come, so I'll see you then.